the majority of bodybuilders today still, steam, still seem to operate on the notion that their purpose is to go into the gym to see how many sets they can do, how much they can take, or how long they can mindlessly endure. And that is wrong because bodybuilding is not aerobic. A bodybuilding workout, in other words, audience, is not an endurance contest. Bear in mind that your purpose is not to go into the gym to see how long you can mindlessly endure. Your purpose as a bodybuilder or strength athlete is to go into the gym and intelligently, logically, rationally do what nature requires to trigger the body's growth mechanism into motion and no more. Then get the hell out of the gym, go home, rest, and grow. That sounds real good, doesn't it? Gets my attention every time I say it. <clears throat> Many bodybuilders apparently don't understand that the big picture in bodybuilding is comprised essentially of two elements of equal value, literally 50-50, not 60-40 or 70-30, but 50-50, with neither of the elements being even slightly more important than the other. The first element, of course, there's no gain saying it, is the actual workout itself. And the second, the second element, the other 50%, just as important, is the rest period between workouts. And here's why. The workout, you must understand, audience, doesn't actually produce muscular growth. Remember, the workout is a stimulus. The workout merely stimulates the body's growth mechanism into motion. It is the body itself that produces the growth, but only if left undisturbed by further exercise stress during a sufficient rest period. Or in other words, if you don't rest enough, you won't grow enough, if at all. Now here's the crux of the problem. How could anyone know with reasonable certainty how much time need elapse between workouts? Well, I'm going to tell you. Immedi immediately upon completion of a workout. You don't feel the same as you, as you did before the workout, do you? No, you're exhausted. In addition to the personal experience or the subjective sense of feeling fatigued, you're also exhausted in the, in the technical sense in that a considerable portion of your body's resources or recovery ability was used to fuel the workout. You feel like you're in a hole. There was a deficit created. In fact, we call from earlier that to the extent that one works out, that is, performs a number of sets, he digs a hole into his recovery ability. The first thing that the body must do after the workout is not build the mountain on top of the muscle, but fill the hole, or recovery, we call it. And the crucial point here is the process of recovery is not completed, Zippo, immediately upon completion of the workout. In fact, the completion of the recovery process itself may take up to five days or even longer in some cases before the body even has a chance to start building the mountain on top of the muscle. And if you train again before the recovery process is completed, you will short circuit the growth production process entirely. That's correct. The recovery process alone may take up to several days itself to be completed, before the, before the body has a chance to even start building the muscle. I'm going to finish up here today, not with a, any more abstract theory, but a concretization of the theory, the nuts and bolts, the actual training program itself. What I'm going to present to you is a detailed outline of a modified, improved version of the consolidation program listed in Heavy Duty 2, Mind and Body, my latest book. From one perspective, at least, it might be said that this is a perfect bodybuilding program if you keep in mind, at least, that the ideal situation is to be able to stimulate all of the major muscles of the body with the least amount of exercise possible. What I would suggest you consider trying, at least, for part of the year, of course, you're not morally, legally bound to do this all year around, but as I tell my training clients, Having hired me as your trainer, it's my job to get you growing stronger and bigger in the fastest way possible. And I have found through considerable experience that this, this program literally does represent 
again, from a certain perspective, throughout part of the training year, a perfect program. I would suggest you start by training once a week, doing two different basic workouts. We'll refer to them here as workout A and workout B. Now, a lot of people like conveniently to work out on weekends, so what you would do is on the first weekend, do workout A. Seven days later, do workout B. Workout A will consist of number one, a set of squats, preferably on a machine. If not the Nautilus Duo squat, then perhaps a Smith machine. If you have any problems with your back or you can't do squats for whatever reason, then I, I would suggest you substitute leg presses. Do one set of squats to fail your 8 to 15 reps. Now that's just a guide figure, by the way, 8 to 15. Uh, I don't know that there is a perfect rep range, but you've got to start somewhere. You have to do something. 8 to 15 has proven empirically through observation to work quite well for the legs. After a brief rest, and by a brief rest, I mean go get a drink of water, walk around for a few seconds, 30 seconds, a minute, depending upon your existing condition, but rest as little as possible. As soon as you recognize you're ready to go, proceed to a set of close grip palms up pull downs. Close grip palms up pull downs. And by that I mean your grip should be 8 or 10 inches apart depending upon your shoulder width and your physical stature. Palms up, I mean a, a curling grip. Your palms are literally facing up. Initiate the movement with extreme deliberation, utilizing no thrust or momentum to get the weight started and to keep it moving. Pull it down to your clavicles under hyper strict control. Pause for a long static count of two or three seconds and lower under strict control. That's all you're going to do. A set of squats, 8 to 15 to failure, followed by a very brief rest. And he said a close grip, palms up, pull down, 6 to 10 reps to failure. That's all you're going to do. Two sets, two exercises, one set of each. One week later, you'll do workout B, which will consist of, number one, a set of regular, not stiff-legged, but the regular old-fashioned deadlift, or as many of you here seem to enjoy, you might want to use the trap bar. That's fine with me. Five to eight reps to failure. After a brief rest, proceed to exercise number two. A set of dips, six to ten reps to failure. Now, don't make the mistake of gauging or evaluating the success, the success of any one of these workouts based on pump or soreness. If getting a pump was clear proof that growth was stimulated, then all these people I see training volume style for hours, even two and three times a day, would have 32-inch arms by now because they get pumped every day, twice and thrice a day for years. Getting a pump is not important. It feels good. I like it myself, but it's not important. The main point here is, and this is an important point, you won't know that any one of these workouts was a successful workout until the next time you do that workout. If you're stronger, obviously a positive change took place. And the point there is keep a training journal. Record the date of each workout. List your body weight at the beginning. List the exercises, the amount of weight, of course. And be real cautious and careful about this last point. <clears throat> Accurately record the number of reps. Okay? Thank you.